Earnings news now from India and specifically Mahindra Holdings. It's reported a steady growth in Q4, total income climbing 17% year on year, even as the country saw a rise in its Omicron cases during the quarter. Resort occupancy for Mahindra jumping 77% during the same period and Mahindra Holidays expects more improvement in travel demand during the months ahead. Kabinda Singh is the Managing Director and CEO at Mahindra Holidays and Resorts India. He joins us now from Mumbai. Thanks very much indeed for being with us. So the growth uh, in Q1, it looks good. I mean, impressive numbers, but of course, that's a really low base effect. Um, tell us how you see the future and the development of the industry. Uh, if you were to think about our numbers, uh, actually, we did not have a low base because in uh, Q1, as you say, and for us, Q4, uh, we had a very good quarter last year because there was no uh, you know, COVID wave in India at that time. In fact, uh, that quarter was one of our best ever quarters. And in fact, this quarter has actually beaten that quarter. Uh, we have had the highest ever resort income. We have been able to grow our profit before tax at a very, very healthy rate at 37%. And our cash position has significantly improved to about 1,172 crores. So this is uh, one of the best quarters and albeit mm -hmm. on a reasonably good base. And in fact, we are now beating our own pre-pandemic numbers. Uh, if you look at what's happening in industry, I can say one thing that the March occupancies have actually surprised us with about 89% occupancies in March. As I speak now, we closed April. Even April is done at about 88%. We are looking at forward bookings in May and June also at about 88%. So it's been... a uh, a big rebound in leisure travel for sure. All right, that's a very different picture then, uh, Kavinda, uh, and looking very positive. I mean, how do you account for the strength of the sector and where specifically is it coming from? So, uh, you know, actually what happened is that the Omicron wave was a bit of a dampener even in this quarter in January. The moment the Omicron wave uh, sort of ebbed, the restrictions were eased off. We saw people wanting to travel and travel like never before. And, you know, we have a base of members, which is 2.66 lakhs, which is a quarter of a million uh, base, as I say. And this base of members with their family members actually adds up to about a million cohort, which is, uh, which is in some manner wanting to holiday at our resorts because we also increased our resort count. We added new destinations. We created new experiences. People want to be outdoors. So all of that put together, we saw huge traction in terms of people wanting to holiday, apart from the fact that all our resorts are certified platinum by Bureau Veritas in terms of safety and hygiene. So no safety concerns, no mobility restrictions, people wanting to enjoy outdoors, uh, get into family vacations. We have larger apartment sizes, studio, one bedroom, two bedroom apartments, which actually help families to travel together. And that's one of the reasons. And also 80% of our resorts are in drivable destinations. So all of that is helping. Mm -hmm. Indeed it is. Uh, I see that your European subsidiary Holiday Club Resorts achieved an EBITDA of close to break even. How is the ongoing war in Ukraine impacting business in Europe? So, uh, as you know, uh, we have uh, a very significant presence in Europe through Holiday Club Resorts. Uh, this is some. This is a. This is a company that we are very proud of. They actually broke even, uh, as you rightly said, at the EBITDA level. And considering that they had their waves running from actually November end to almost February mid, they had lots of restrictions. And despite that, this performance is indeed commendable because the EBITDA break even happened uh, at the year level, which is which is again significant. Uh, if I were to look at the situation in Ukraine and the effect on uh, our operations. The good news for us is that the Finland business is largely dependent on domestic travel. We are a leisure company, and we are seeing that our occupancies, our ARRs, the in all metrics, including timeshare sales, are doing well because it's dependent on the domestic uh, travel, and that's strong in Finland. And we have an operation in Sweden and Grand Canaries, and that's another area where we have seen movement because these uh, Scandinavian, Norwegian visitors are continuing to visit our Ore Resort in Sweden, and so is the situation in Canary Islands. So at this moment of time, the only impact 
that is seen is in terms of inflationary pressures are building up even in Finland, particularly on the energy side. And that's something that we are watching out for. Are you confident that ac across the board that you're going to be able to competently and fully cover any higher costs from, uh, from input? You know, the input of this and input of that, everything's higher, right? Uh, are you going to be able to fully be able to recover that through passing on those costs to consumers? Uh, it's, it's never easy, but uh, the good news in the leisure business is that when you are in a position where you are in a position to create great value, and what you do is in the service business that we are in, we constantly refresh our offerings. And that gives us an opportunity to take a very calibrated price increases. And of course, uh, you do try to do your best in terms of finding alternative methods of procurement. And uh, so you do a combination of things and that's how you try to protect your margins. As of now, we are reasonably confident of protecting our margins. Um, Sri Lanka is on your doorstep uh, and a couple of years ago it was looking like a, a really boom market and a potentially really uh, valuable one. Obviously things have changed drastically since then. Uh, how much had you focused on Sri Lanka before the problems and, uh, and how much problem is it causing you now? Uh, for us, uh, you know, we have an arrangement for our members to head to Sri Lanka. We have two arrangements, one in Mount Lavinia Resort in near Colombo, and another one which we actually signed up in this quarter itself, uh, a place called Club Bentota, uh, in Bentota. And uh, the, the thing that we have noticed at this point of time is that I believe over a period of time, as things settle down a bit, uh, Indians would continue to travel to Sri Lanka, particularly people from South of India. And uh, I think there'll be a value in the travel because of the currency advantage that Indians may have. So therefore, since our arrangement is a soft arrangement, it's more an inventory arrangement. We do not have our own properties at, that, at this moment of time. In Sri Lanka, we are good as far as Sri Lanka is concerned. Thank you so much. It's been a really interesting conversation. Kavinda Singh from Mahindra Holidays and Resorts in India. Well, the markets there are up and running, so let's head to Mumbai for the early action.